Hello and welcome to the 28th video in this series of programming tutorials on C. So this is the last of the bit operators or bitwise operators that we're going to be covering in this tutorial series, well so far anyway. And this one is going to be over quite a funky one called the exclusive OR. And the way the exclusive OR works, if you look at the two numbers I have here and I've represented them in binary notation here, we have num A as 12 and num B as 9. So 1100 and 1001. If we exclusive OR these, then what we actually get is a 0, a 1, a 0, and a 1. And why the way exclusive OR works is, is if either of these are a 0 or a 1, and the two numbers being matched together, then it results in a 1. If they're both 0, both 1, then it results in a 0. And this can give you actually some very interesting manipulations within numbers. So things like hashing, when you're password hashing, or even swapping variable two variable values without actually needing to use a temporary variable to hold them. So I'll demonstrate that now. I've got a program here which I'll just save and compile. And I've got step 1, num A is 12, num B is 9. All right, let's go through here step by step. Let's say that num A equals num A, and the exclusive OR is the little hat sign, XOR with num B. Now we already know from above that that will give us the, the result that num A now has a value of 5, and we'll call that step 2. So just compile and run, and now num A is 5 and num B is 9. Now, let's do num B equals num A, which remember is now 5, XORed with num B. So we'll now be XORing 1001 with 0101, so we'll get wet, we'll, we will get 1100. So num B will actually become num A. So if I just take the next step here, this I'll call this uh, step two here. We'll end up exclusive ordering that this and this, and we'll actually end up with one one zero zero. So if I now print step three. You'll see now that when I compile and run this, that num b has actually got num a's value. And now if I make num a the result of XORing num a with num b, with num a now having this value and num b having this value, I'll get 1, 0, 0, 1, which, fully enough, is what the original value of num b is, and call this step 4. So if I now compile and run, and now you can see that num A was 12 and num B was 9, and after doing this little trick here, num A is now 9 and num B is now 12. So you can see that there are already some quite cool properties that you can do when you're using exclusive, exclusive OR with bit operations. So now let's do a printf and a new line, and another new line, because I want a bit of space. And now let's have a look at something else also interesting. Let's do int rand1 equals rand, and we're going to do three random numbers. Okay, so first thing to do is to print to the screen our random numbers. So Sorry, this is taking such a little bit of setup, but at least it allows you to follow on at a reasonable, follow along at a reasonable pace. Good, okay. So we've generated our random numbers. And now let's have a look at some interesting stuff with the XOR again. So these are our random numbers, and let's call key one the result of XORing all of these together. And then we'll print key one to the screen. And hang on, we'll make something called key two as well, actually. 
and in key 2 we'll just XOR rand 1 and rand 3 together. Just copy this to be a little bit quicker. We're doing key 1 and key 2. OK. And now let's save this and just compile and run this. And now we can see we've got RAND1 to 41. We've got these various numbers here. And key 1 is 20660 and key 2 is 6295. Very good. Now what we can do, or hopefully you've gathered from the previous code above, is we could take key 1 and actually XOR out the value of RAND2. And now print the values again of key 1 and key 2. And now you'll find that they'll actually be the same. So if I compile and run this, and we've simply XORed out the value of RAND2. So they're both interchangeable. You can go out and in, so you've got your key. You can XOR a number in, so I like to say it, and then back out. And in fact, if we look at key uh, 1 again, we could now XOR out RAND3, and what we'd be left with then is actually key 1 being the same value as RAND1. Oops. So if I take out, or let's take out RAND1 actually, and now key 1 will end up being the same value as RAND3. We see that RAND3 is 6334 and key 1 is indeed 6334. So, for instance, an application of this is something that I use in the chess engine, is it's when, when we're representing pieces on a board in a position with a unique key, we hash the pieces in and out exactly in this way. Okay, that was quite quick, but it's fairly simple. It's a concept that's quite difficult to get your head around at first. I suggest you just have a look through, particularly this first example here again, to see how the numbers were swapped and work through manipulating the bits. But this exclusive OR operator in computing can be very, very useful when you bear in mind that you can do tricks such as those demonstrated in this video. OK, thanks very much for listening. Comments, criticism, questions, welcome on YouTube. And I think in the next video we'll start a small series on developing a tic-tac-toe or knots and crosses game in the console. Thanks very much.